get some viewers. So how do you know when people are on? All right. You go ahead. We got everything Yep. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Claiborne Farm. We're here at the Falling Barn, and we're going to tell you a little bit today about what we do here at the Falling Facility and kind of give everybody a little bit of positive insight on what we do and brighten up your days. I know everybody's going through a lot right now. Being at home and not being able to go and do your normal daily lives, stuff that you do every day and you know we're thinking about everybody out there who's going through a hard time right now maybe lost their job right temporarily and you know are struggling with all the stuff going on people who are sick and have family members who are sick and we're just trying to bring a little bit of positivity into everybody's homes and show you guys what we do here at Claiborne Farm and some of the foals and the mares that are getting ready to have their babies and if you guys have any questions or anything you guys want to say to us feel free to type it below and the girls will let me know your questions and I'll answer them the best that I can. So my name is Lauren Messina and I am actually from Chicago, Illinois. And just like a lot of the big cities, my family is also being affected by all this stuff going on. And I know how a lot of you feel and we're just trying to think of all the positives and, you know, shine some light on some of the good things still happening in the world. And I have been working at Claiborne. This is my fifth polling season. I have done the nursery barns, I've done yearlings, I've done the sales, and this is my third year foaling mares here at Claiborne. I am an Iowa State grad. I studied animal science. I did mostly equine and I did a little bit of cattle. Um, I live here on the farm, I work here. My life has become Claiborne Farm and I love every part about it. Here we have our pregnant mares. Um, we have 23 stalls, this is our holding barn. The mares come here from all over the farm. When they get about 30 days out from their due date, or they start showing that they're producing milk and starting to get a bag, we bring them in, we trailer them in from all the different barns. We have some larger barns on the Marchmont side that hold about 20 mares, and some smaller barns on the Claiborne side that only hold about 10 to 12, sometimes 14 mares. These two are pregnant mares. Um, one on the, I think, left is not due until next month. And then the one on the right is getting a little bit closer. I'll swap that. The one on the left is getting closer, but the one on the right, she's not due for another month or so. So she'll be hanging out here for a while. Each field, they go all the way back down to the creek and back to that barn all the way back there. So there's plenty of room for the mares to stretch their legs and stay apart. The mares are buddied up in about two or three from the same field. They kind of come from all over and get put in these big fields together. So they're not always, you know, all buddies, but they normally at least have like someone that they can, another horse that they can be with and go out with and they'll go down to the creek and go up on the hill and they can kind of stay away from each other, but still have a buddy. We also put mares in the field on the other side of the road. So there's never going to be more than 13 or 14 mares per field. And they're very, very large fields. So they won't ever be crowded and the mares can kind of stay apart and do their thing and enjoy the last month of their pregnancy eating grass. And they, we do fill the hay feeders up when there is no green grass. So they always have something to eat. And then they're only out in these fields for a couple hours a day. They go out at about 6.15 in the morning and then they come in about 2.30 in the afternoon. So they're never out there overnight. They're always being watched. All the managers up at the office can see the mares. People driving by can see the mares. They're always kept an eye on. So we know if anything's going on, we can get to them as soon as possible and kind of go from there. Chloe wants to know how many mares we have and if you have a favorite mare. Oh, how many mares we have? What is the total mares now? About 300? It's about 250. There's about 250 mares here right now. 
this year we're gonna have about 150 foals, give or take. We currently have 104 foals on the ground and there's 44 more foals left to be born. My favorite mare. Oh, that's a good question. Mm. Start walking over there. Yeah, do. Hmm. Favorite mare, can you pick I one? Guess I, if I picked one right now, I would say Rumor. She's up here right now. I love Rumor. She had a colt that ran in a Breeders' Cup race a couple years ago named Has It. And she's just the sweetest mare ever. She's one of those you can kind of do whatever with, be around. She's really easygoing and just a big sweetheart. Any other questions? How many acres is it for? It's a little over 3,000 acres. The cool thing, every part of our farm is under easement with the Bluegrass Conservancy. So this will always remain farmland. It will never be able to be developed. Um, kind of a fun fact. So now we're heading over to our foaling barn. Lauren, you want to talk a little bit yep. about moving the mares over there and what happens over at our foaling barn? Yep. So this, we leave them at our holding barn until they start developing a really good bag, maybe get a little bit of wax. You know, just getting closer to having their babies. And we take them from the holding barn. And the first day, maybe we'll put them in this paddock right here so we can keep a closer eye on them. And then we'll take them over across the street where we just can walk them. It's very close. It's a short walk. We'll just take them out of the field or the paddock and we'll walk them across the street and bring them into their new stalls. They, some of them will only be over at the new barn for a couple days. If we catch them coming up real quick, we'll bring them up over. Or sometimes they stay over there for a week or two. We just never really know. It's kind of like a waiting game to see when they're going to fall. I mean, we can't really predict it but we try our best. We have a bunch of different paddocks over here at our foaling barn. We keep the babies on the left in the smaller paddocks, and then we put the pregnant mares in all these paddocks to the right. This way they can have 24 hour surveillance. We're always watching the mares. We're always checking on them. We even have our office and our tack room right here. So we can go in there, eat our lunch, and we can still look out the windows and see the mares at all times. We'll put the mares who are the closest right here in front. That way, they're always being looked at. We always can see them. People driving by can see them. That way, if they were to come up and start having their baby, we can look at them right away. And you'll notice the fields on this side of the foaling division are quite a bit smaller. So that allows our team to constantly have eyes on the mares that are up in this division. Yeah, exactly. They're never gonna be too far that we can't get to them. If they do decide to start foaling, we can get to them right away and then assist them in their delivery. Um, the delivery process here, we do, we are involved when the mares full. However, we don't pull, we don't tug, we don't yank. It's still very natural. We're just there to make sure that everything is going smoothly. Everything is going right. The foal's in the correct position where the feet are like one in front of the other and the head's coming out with the feet. And we just kind of make sure that everything is, you know, all in line and we just kind of make sure they have a nice smooth delivery. Question from one of our viewers. How long is a mare generally in labor? From when they break water to when the foal is delivered, it's normally about, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. We don't want to rush them. We wait till they lay down and start pushing on their own. And then we just guide the fall out. But once they start pushing that fall out, I mean, sometimes it's less than a minute and that fall is out. Sometimes it's a few minutes, five minutes. You never, you know, each mare is different, just like people, except a lot shorter labor from what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> but each mare, I mean, they're, they're pregnant for about 11 months. We've had mares stay pregnant for almost a full year. We had a mare already this year who was pregnant for 365 days. These three mares out here are due very, very soon. One is taking a very nice nap right now. She's enjoying the day. She doesn't even know we're here. <laughs> Can you have a look in the barn? Yeah, can head on into the barn and kind of show you guys the stalls we use and 
for our procedures for keeping the barn clean and sanitary for each bull that comes in. Cynthia is wondering how often the mares are bred. Um, each mare is different. Um, they normally do have a foal every year. Um, if they had any complications during their pregnancies, they normally do give them a year off and let them recover and rest. Um, if they have a late foal, they don't try to rush them to get back in foal. They'll give them another year off so that they can, you know, recover and then have a baby the following year. So every mare is different. I mean, some are able to have a foal every year and they're happy to raise their babies. They love their babies and some will have them every other year. Some will have them, you know, just every mare is different. Tara's 11 year old daughter wants to know if it makes the staff happy when a new foal is born. Oh, we love when new foals are born. I love to take pictures and little videos and send them to, you know, my family and friends. They love to see the babies. My grandma loves to see the babies. So we love what we do. We love the babies. Um, I know all the guys that work down here, they love the babies. They love what they do. The guys who work down here in this barn, they have the two night guys. They have been here a very long time. James, he's worked here for 53 years. He loves what he, do, he does. He wouldn't still be here if he, you know, didn't love his job. And, you know, Scott's been here a very long time as well. He's been foaling mares for a very long time. They've got the opportunity to foal a lot of graded stakes winners. I know James, they predict, has foaled over 10,000 mares and over 100 graded stakes winners. I mean, he's, it's just awesome. There's some really, you know, talented foaling men here at Claiborne Farm who have so much experience. They're great teachers and the daytime guys, Charlie and Scott, I mean, they have also tons and tons of experience. They all know what they're doing. There couldn't be any, you know, better team to, you know, run this foaling facility and teach. They've taught me so much and, you know, it's really an excellent farm for foaling mares and the people here are great. And I couldn't say anything more about Claiborne and the guys who work down here. But this is our foaling barn. We have 14 stalls. The stalls every time a mare foals. So we've had some foals born in the last two days. Each stall will be power washed, scrubbed with soap, and cleaned, and everything. The buckets are cleaned every time so that every time a new foal come mare comes into foal, she has a clean stall, fresh bedding, fresh everything to have her baby. So everything's always kept really tidy, really neat, and really clean. When the mares are just in these stalls, they get about an average amount of bedding, plenty of hay, they get free choice hay as much as they have. But as soon as they have a full, we put tons more bedding for the babies so they're really comfortable. That if they, when they're trying to get up, if they're flopping and falling and all that, they'll have plenty of bedding to land on and jump off of and kind of they're, they're really well taken care of. And I think we've got a couple of foals outside. You want to venture outside and see some of them? Yeah. So when our foals are born, how long do they stay in this barn? The foals, the mares and foals that are born, they're normally here about 24 hours. If they do have any sort of small issues, we'll keep them here an extra day or two. So they have, you know, 24 hour eyes on them for 24 hours of care and watch and all that but then normally about 24 hours and we'll go to our nursery barns, which you guys will get to see next week. Yep. And they're there at the nursery barns for, it could be anywhere from like a week or two. Some are there almost three weeks and they get to go out with their, uh, they go from being in paddocks to being out with mares, other mares, and you guys will get to learn all about that um, next week. Roseanne wants to know if we have a vet on staff. We do have a vet. You can actually see in the distance here, this white building. That is where our vet office is. The vet lives, you know, here on the farm. He's got his office right here. He's here 24 seven and we always have, you know, him here in case there's an emergency all hours of the day. He can get here as fast as he can. Oh, there's Bradley. So Lauren, tell us a little bit about this mare and her foal. So this mare, her name is Stradivarius. They just purchased her in November. 
-hmm. And she is a client mare. She's owned by. She's owned by Wimber. Or she was purchased by Cromwell Bloodstock, the Keeneland November sale this past year. And this is actually a colt by Justify. Sure, everybody knows Justify, the famous Triple Crown winner. About once we have a foal that's born, tell us about the process before they're outside with mom in their paddock. There's okay. a few things that go on before that happens. So once they're born, they're the, either they're born during the day or during the night, depending on when they decide. Um, they're watched over and checked on at all times to make sure that they're getting up, they're nursing, you know, the mom is being attentive and all that. And then in the morning, we will have the veterinarian come up here and he checks the foals, checks everything from their ribs, their ankles, their legs all over to make sure that everything is right and there's no issues, nothing that they think is wrong with them. And we give all of our foals plasma on the you know first day just to help boost their immune systems and you know we <laughs> make sure everything is good with all the babies before they go outside. So they're getting a full vet check over, making sure everything's okay, everything's good, the foals are good, and then they can go outside. Any questions? If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment and Lauren will try and answer them. Did you already mention all of our foals get weighed here on the farm when they're born? I did not. We do weigh all of our foals. Sometimes we'll have foals that, you know, are about the maidens, which is a mare who's having a baby for the first time. Their foals tend to be a little bit lighter, about 100 pounds, a little over 100 pounds. This foal here weighs 144 pounds, so that is a pretty decent sized foal. I've seen them all the way up to 160 pounds. Some of the bigger mares will have some bigger foals, but on average, they weigh about 120 to 130 pounds. Julie was asking, do we put halters on our foals before they're turned out? We do. We don't put a halter on them before vet work. We wait till they're, everything's okay with their eyes, everything, so that before we put a halter on them. And then when we turn them out for the first time, we will put a halter on them. It helps with catching the foals and kind of desensitizing them because they're handled every single day of their lives. They're always worked with, they're brought in and out. And that way, when we're catching them, we can grab that halter and lead them in and teach them right from the start how, you know, how to lead. And we kind of work with them every single day so that they're, you know, well handled. We teach them, you know, how to behave and get them started for the long life ahead of them. about live birthings and uh, where With Honors is right now uh, from last year. Do you want to speak about Full Patrol? I know we're not doing it this year, but just about the program in general. So Full Patrol, they kind of follow the mares during their gestation and then they're foaling and kind of follow the foals throughout their lives. And um, With Honor, she's now on the, the honor it. She has moved over to the yearling division and she is doing well. She's growing and I know she's a little bit sassy but she's you know doing great her her the dam with honor she actually just had a full just a couple days ago um a really nice tap at Philly she's doing great you guys might be able to see her um next week during mm -hmm. the nursery barn tour she should still be up there and that program's really good of giving people an insight to kind of what we do here um we can't always have visitors out on the farm you know, all the time because it's a, it's a very busy, 
the horse farms, there's always a lot going on um, year round, whether it's the sales, foaling mares, it's hard to have people out here all the time. So the full patrol gives people, you know, a chance to see, you know, the day in the life of a mare or a yearling and stallions and all the different things that they do. So you can see how, you know, their, their day's like and what times they're out, what times they're in, what they're doing and something that we can't take you guys to see all the time. We do have a tour out here that hopefully we'll be back running soon where you can ride around on a, I guess you could say it's a golf cart and they'll, you know, take you around all around the farm and you can see mares and foals and some sail horses depending on the time of year. It's actually a really neat thing and for people who don't know what, what the life's like out here, you can kind of see what happens on a day-to-day -day and there's just different things that trying to involve people who don't actually know what always goes on out here to see all the good things that we do and what happens and <laughs> he's learned how to use those legs. Maybe he'll uh, win the triple crown one day. Hopefully. Any other questions? Nancy was asking how you join the Full Patrol, and you don't actually even have to join. If you just go to www.fullpatrol.com, all of the mares that are participating this year um, have 24-hour cameras on them. So whether they're inside, they're outside, um, mares that have foaled, you can actually watch a replay of some of the mares foaling. So that's all accessible at fullpatrol.com. Some of the barns, I mean, they go way, way back there. Um, we are lucky enough to have plenty of trucks and trailers available, and it's also a lot faster. I know we leave, we do leave the foals in the stall while we do take the mares up there. It's for a very short time, and with being able to trailer them from the barn to the shed, it makes the process a lot faster, and that way the babies are only away from the mares for a short time. So it's all in the best interest of the babies and the mares to use the trailer to make the process faster and that way we get them back together and get them back together, the baby nursing and make sure that they're, you know, everybody's okay and it's least stressful on the mares and foals as possible and just keep all the mares and foals happy is really our goal. asking at what age are our foals weaned? Um, they do it kind of more based on the foal. Um, the bigger, you know, foals that are growing really fast and they sometimes are one of the first ones that get weaned just so that they don't like overgrow and it affects their joints. Um, it's, it really just depends. Some are about four months, five months. They kind of, they look at these foals every single day and evaluate them as they're growing and wait till they're ready. Um, they never just do a certain day like, oh, we all have to wean them all on this exact day. It's kind of just how each individual foal is doing and then they choose to wean them. I mean, some of these mares almost, you know, will start producing less milk and the foals will be eating grain and hay and, you know, they almost don't need to have that milk supply anymore and then they'll decide to wean them. Are all of the mares and foals owned by Claiborne? They are not all owned by Claiborne. We have a large variety of clients. Um, some are partners, some are just Claiborne, and there is a lot of clients out here. There's a wide variety of pedigree out here, and um, all the owners are super great. They're all super kind and very polite. They always are, you know, talk to us when they come out here, and 
you know, they're very generous to the employees. They do a lot of great things for us. And, um, I mean, there is a very, very wide range of owners that have mares out here. Some have been with the farm for a very long time and some are some newer clients like this mare out here. It's for a newer client. And then there's, you know, some mares here that are from clients that have been with Claiborne from almost the beginning. Question from one of our viewers, when will we finish up our foaling season? Um, our foaling season, we normally have our last foals in the beginning of May. Um, some like to wait and hang on till mid-May if they can, but most of our uh, foals will be born by May. So the breeding season generally with thoroughbreds is going to be from February and last all the way in, until the very beginning of July. Um, as Lauren had said, mares are in foal for roughly 11 months. So conversely, our foaling season would start in January and at the very latest end in June. Yes. We had a question, um, how and when are they named? Oh, um, every owner does their foals differently. Some um, owners pick out their names right in the beginning. Um, some of them aren't named until they're, you know, two. It just depends on each owner is different and when they, you know, name their foals. <laughs> so these foals that are just born, we'll generally call them by their mother's name and their, the year that they were born. So this foal we would refer to as Stradivarius 20. And even the ones that are named, when they're, you know, foals or yearlings, we do continue to call them by the mare's name. It just, you know, keeps it less confusing so everybody knows who the foals are. And so this one will continue to be just called Stradivarius the whole time that he is here. One of our viewers asked, are our Claiborne mares only bred to Claiborne stallions? No, Claiborne breeds their mares to stallions from all different farms. And we have Claiborne mares who go all over and breed to all different, you know, stallions at different farms. Um, we do have a lot of Claiborne stallion foals out here, like the one in the paddock next door. She's a, that's a mastery filly. So we do see a lot of foals by uh, the Claiborne stallions, but it's one of our one of our viewers, Daisy, would like to know if we have a favorite foal yet. Answer carefully. Oh, <laughs> favorite foal. Who have I really liked? I thought everybody has their different favorites. Oh, that's a hard question. I could tell you who my favorite foal was last year. I love the sentence cult that we had. He was the cutest thing I've ever seen. He's still my background on my phone. This year, ooh. I don't know, we have a mare photograph and she had a really nice, big, dark, dark war front colt and he is just a big ham and I really liked him. But, what Very was your good. favorite, Jill? Who's your favorite foal? I've had quite a few favorites so far this year. Um, Longview the other day Ooh, yeah, would be. Oh yeah, that's over here. Yep. Longview had a really nice war front. Any last minute questions before we... Do you want to walk back and look at the other mares out there? Sure. Let the baby sleep. What's a regular day um, for you look like, Lauren? Sabrina wants to know. So my day, half the week I come in at 5 a.m. and I stay till 5 p.m. The other half the week I come in at about 6.30 and I stay till 4. On a day where I am here for the long 5 to 5, we get here and we'll go and we'll, you know, check on all the mirrors. And then the farm manager will come out and we'll show him all the new foals. 
so he can see them and then write a list for the vet. Sorry. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> He'll write a list for the vet and for the people at the office to know all the new foals that were born the night before. And then from there, we'll go and we'll feed all the mares. And we give them about 30 minutes to eat their feed. Some mares are on sweet feed and some get pelleted feed. After we feed them, we will turn out all the mares. Half of them go, you know, in the two different fields out there, depending on what side of the barn they are, that's where they get turned out. So we spend about a half hour turning out all the mares. And um, when we decide on what paddocks to put them in, just kind of based on how close they look, we'll put the ones that look very close up here in front so we can keep an eye on them. And then we'll put, you know, the ones that are close, but not like they're gonna fold today, we'll put them out in the back so we can still keep an eye on them, but they have a little bit more room to go around. We can show you the back here. So we turn out all the mares, and then after that, the vet will show up and we'll do vet work with the foals. Um, whether he's coming to check on one that's, you know, two days old or, you know, a day old, he'll check all the foals, do plasma, he'll take blood on them so that he can send it up um, to the clinic and they will check the blood to make sure that everything's okay with the foal, blood work is good. And then after that, we will start cleaning the barns. So we have both barns to clean. So there's 14 stalls here, 23 stalls over there. We clean all the stalls, we'll put the muck on a truck, and we'll take it to the back of the farm where we dump all of our muck. Once we get all of the barns done, then we will um, just keep checking the mares. Uh, we walk around every 10-15 minutes to make sure nobody's falling, and if they are, then we'll fold the mares. After that, about 2.30 we will um, bring all the mares in and we bring them in about 2.30 and they get to eat their dinner and we'll keep checking on them till about 5 o'clock and then the night guys come in. One of our viewers asked or commented we put a ton of work into raising these foals. How fulfilling for you is it to see one of them go on to win a race or multiple races? It is very exciting. Um, I know some of the guys here, like um, Charlie and Scott, who works here at nights, they got to full blame, and then Charlie got to raise blame, and you know, it was he he said it was exciting to watch him through his career and see everything he did, and now he's here at, as a stallion, and we get to full the the mares have the foals by blame, and you know, it's kind of exciting just to see these little babies that are you know learning to run and stand and all that go from here and then next thing you know they're running races running here at Kimlin. you know we can watch them on our phone watch them on our tv so it's it's pretty exciting to see them go from you know these little peanuts to you know running sometimes they become stallions sometimes they come back here and are having babies so continue on about watching those horses on the track and then what does it mean when they come back and you see them kind of transition into their next phase of life? It's pretty neat to watch them change. Um, we've had a couple mares this year who are having babies. One of the mare in the front field actually raises a yearling. So I was here the day she was born, you know, four years ago. And then she went on, she, you know, didn't do anything on the track, but now she's having a baby this year. So it's just cool to, you know, you remember when they're these little peanuts and now they're here having babies. It's, you know, it's, it's exciting. It's, you know, nice to see them, even if they don't always become big great stakes winners. They always have a home here. They come back, they get to, you know, raise their babies. And these mares love to be moms. You know, they love their job. They love their babies. They, you know, they love what they do, just like we do. All these mares are, you know, getting close to having their babies. Some of them, their friends have already fold, so now they're just hanging out and making new friends and <laughs> don't mind all the mud. We've had a lot of rain this year. They're all pretty happy, enjoying some of the new green grass. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> One 
of our viewers, Jamie, was asking if we could see Full Patrol Star honor it, and maybe we'll have to include her in a couple of weeks on one of our other tours. Jamie said she might have her own reasons for wanting to see honor it, but. <laughs> <laughs> So what are the hours for uh, these mares? What do their days look like? So they get fed in the morning and then they go out about about 6.30, 6, 6.30 they'll go out and they get to stay out all day until about 2.30 and then we bring them back in and they'll have their lunch waiting for them and they'll get to eat and then they hang out in their stalls all night and we just keep an eye on them. They think they're going to come in and eat right now. The gray mare, she's a little bit older mare. She's had a few foals here. And then the chestnut, she's a maiden, so this will be her first foal. See Charles rolling friendly. things we look at on these mares to see if they're getting close. We'll look at their their bags to see if they're, you know, producing milk. They'll get little wax that kind of looks like candle wax and that kind of shows that they're, you know, getting closer to having their babies. Um, their bodies will relax. Um, their back end will get looser. Their tail will kind of be, you know, getting more relaxed and we just keep watching them for signs that looks like they're, you know, getting closer to having their babies. They're very spoiled. Yes, they are. <laughs> they're all handled every day. Um, they're used to people. I don't have any more peppermint. <laughs> they're good girls. They've all been enjoying the mud and the green grass. <laughs> the horses are spoiled with peppermint. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Lauren, for showing us around. Yeah, any sure. other questions? Let's see. One last thing, are, are mares and foals that are just born are turned out by themselves? Can you talk a little bit about why that is the case? Um, we're giving the mare time to bond with her foal and, you know, putting them with other mares and foals right away. You know, they're going to be very protective of their babies. You know, they're just starting... They're, they have a bond right from the beginning. They instantly go to licking their babies, loving their babies. But like when your kids get older, you know, they get a little bit more freedom. So we let them get to a point where the foals, you know, have a little bit more freedom. They'll start kind of wandering on their own, having a little bit more independence where the mares aren't as protective. So when they do go out in the field with the other mares, the foals can go off and they'll go play with the other babies. And they're not still in that very like protective phase. They'll be, you know, less likely to you know fight with the other mares and be protective once they're a little bit older and it just kind of it's just safer for all the mares in general to just wait a little bit longer if you put them together it could you know be a little risky and we wouldn't want to you know put any of our foals in danger ever so keeping them with just the mares in the beginning for the first few weeks waiting till they're strong enough and that they will be fine to go out and they're capable of being on their own and out in the fields and it's just for the safety of the, the babies. Good. All righty. Well, thank you so much. We'll let you get back to work. We know you have a lot to do today, but we appreciate you yeah. taking some time to thank show our guests around. Thank you guys for around. watching. Um, I hope everybody stays healthy and safe. And we're thinking about everybody out in the world right now and hoping that things get better, you know, not just for us here at the farm, but for everybody. Um, we're going to keep doing these for a couple more weeks to you know, show you guys what we do here at the farm. And we just are trying to bring a little bit of positivity into your homes and we hope you guys enjoy the tour. Alrighty, thank, thank you. you.
ਮੈਂ ਫੋਨ।